Hi, Dr. Wright again from Walnut Creek Animal Hospital in Purcell, Oklahoma. Um, we're finishing up our first aid series for the working class canine. Um, and so basically we've gone through all of the demonstrations on how to make various splints, all the commercial splints that are available. Now we're going to demonstrate the splint we just previously made for this particular model. Um, Schroeder Thomas splint for the back right leg. We're going to demonstrate how to put that thing on correctly. So I added the padding to the uh, saddle part of the pelvic. Um, um, piece and so ultimately this guy is going to be laying down on his side you know at some point this will slide up over the top and into his pelvic region now the very first thing at applying this is going to be to tape this foot down and into um, the bottom of the saddle and so what that does in doing that is one it forces the uh, the splint, it's a little bit difficult because the, the fuzz, the fabric on this thing doesn't really want to take the tape super well, but it keeps the splint up, um, you know, where it is supposed to be. So I'm going to just apply another piece right quick um, to keep it in there. Um, one of the things that might be ideal also is to, um, is to now place a piece and we just stick this back to itself as you pass under um, both sides. So now we've kind of trapped that foot so it can't move one way or the other. Um, and then we start, and I like the uh, Elasticon tape, which is stretchy um, for this next section. And so what we want to do is we want to pass in front of the back bar, but behind the leg with this piece. And then we're just going to pull it in front of the bar and pinch it together. And so what we've done now is we've pulled that leg just a little bit forward, but we've, the tape has caught it and uh, has trapped it. So now we're going to pull in the opposite direction um, with this the same, same principle, front and back. So we're basically suspending this leg between this bar all the way around. And uh, you just alternate strips as you go forward and backwards. Just try not to, you know, pinch it too tight or pull it too tight one direction or the other. Um, and ultimately what we're going to end up with is a splint that has completely isolated this entire leg or immobilized this entire leg except for the specific hip joint um, is all. And so once we get down here to this point, we're pinching that tape together where it sticks to itself. You can put your last piece onto the foot, um, is acceptable as well. And so at this stage you can take this Elasticon tape and if you wanted we could wrap the whole thing with it or you can use something like um, vet wrap or Coban, which is only going to be on for a short period until you get to veterinary care to where it can be addressed um, further. But this just keeps the, uh, the limb in place. It's a little more difficult, you know, to get this particular apparatus too tight. And that's one of the reasons I like them, um, you know, for a, for a splint. Now, if we have to, we're going to stand him back up. If we have to go over the back, we're okay with doing that. Uh, just don't pull this too tight. So we're just going to come back across. Now on male dogs, if this is going to be on for several days, and female dogs, before you can get off of the mountain and get to veterinary care, you have to be uh, cognizant of the fact that you possibly have covered up their prepuce or their vulva, so urination becomes difficult. So just make sure that that is uh, adequately removed from those two areas. But that's a uh, pretty well placed Schroeder Thomas splint for field application for high, any hind limb fracture in the dog. Process works the same way on the front leg with this particular splint. Again, remember you have to make a individual splint for all four limbs so that it fits properly. And uh, we'll move on to the application of the Spica splint next.